It's the epitome of team sport. It's, I think, the only sport where you can't move with the ball. So you have to work with somebody else. I like the discipline about netball and the overall team spirit of being on a team and, you know, whether win or lose, the whole team accomplishment that it wasn't just about me, it was about the entire team. Ball has influenced a lot of women. It influenced me. Um, I don't think that I would have been as confident a leader if I hadn't gone into network. The sport of netball dates back to the late 19th century. The game was based on basketball, but modified so that it adhered to the decorum of the era for women. It wasn't until the late 1950s that the game was introduced here in Cayman. I was in high school when netball was brought to the Cayman Islands. It was brought by a com community sports activist, Teacher Matfield. They invited a team from Jamaica to come and, um, and play, or two teams, and they came, um, Grace Kennedy, and we saw them playing on the court, on the grass court, and the teacher from the high school, which was down by the base, decided that that's a game they want to teach us. After netball was introduced in the schools, two Caymanian women, Lucille Seymour and Veronica Dilbert, learned more about the game while attending college in Jamaica. When they returned to Cayman, the two women decided to expand netball beyond the schools and into the community. We had our first constitution was written by an English lady called Rena Stratford. She came over from Jamaica and put our first constitution together in the 60s. And then in 1977, we did something that no other association had done. We registered it with the government. So it became a, a, charity, a, what, a charter of the government, which is in a comp as a company. No other association had ever done that. Two years after the Cayman Islands Netball Association was registered as a legal entity, the sport got a boost in popularity as a result of happenings elsewhere in the Caribbean. When I was young, that was the time when it was making history in the Caribbean when Trinidad won the first world championship in those days. And then you become excited about it, you know, and want to play the game because it was like the West Indies was on top in netball in those times. In the late 1970s, the first netball primary league was formed and Caymanian girls started playing the sport at young ages. I started to play netball at the age of uh, eight when I was in primary school. And I realized then that I was very good at it. And the coach pushed my sister and I um, in the sport. And as we progressed through high school, uh, we made the national team and just progressed right through. Well, I started playing netball in primary school, late primary, continued into high school when I really developed the passion for it. 
um, ably assisted by our past coach, Mrs. Jean Pierre, who took me into the national team program and I progressed from there. Playing on the national team, playing in club, club teams, and I, I will tell you I'm still playing in the club team. In 1996, the Cayman Islands Netball Association hired Jean Pierre, the famous netballer from Trinidad and Tobago, as its national coach. The golden era of Cayman netball then began. She was one of the premier netball player in Trinidad. She assisted our team in moving to a total different level because we didn't have a national coach. She was hired as a national coach and I saw great improvement in netball on the island and also her attitude in bringing the overall team together, that overall togetherness. We are still seeing the fruits of her labor. People, her name is still being called um, by most netballers will tell you, even their parents will tell you that netball is not the same since she's left. A person's influence is not only when they're with you, but when they're not with you. We have grown men and women, and I say men because some men had some um, interactions with her too, but we have grown netballers who are still today saying, Mrs. Spear said this, or when Mrs. Spear was with us, and we learned this from Mrs. Spear. So that should tell you about her influence on our lives. For the national team players at the time, netball in the Cayman Islands under Jean Pierre was more than just playing a game. It molded the lives of young women, something the Netball Association has tried to do ever since. She was more than a coach. She was a mother figure. She was that sister you didn't have. She was that aunt you didn't have. She was that teacher you didn't have because it wasn't just about netball. She was involved in your personal life. She was involved in your school life if you were a, um, a child in school. So I would say that her influence was not just in terms of coaching, but in building that total person for all the players. I was juggling studies, uh, playing netball, working full time. And I remember going to Miss Pear and I said, Miss Pear, I can't do this, it's just too much. I have to drop netball because I have to focus on my studies. And she's like, Janet, life is about a balance. You have to find that happy medium and try to make everything fit. Think about it, think about um, you know, your career in netball, your future in terms of your studies, and just try to find that happy medium. And I went over and I thought about it and I'm like, okay, I have to prioritize you know, make a schedule, stick with that schedule and, you know, the discipline in order to achieve. And I stuck with it and I was able to achieve all of it, play netball, study, finish my qualification and continue to work full time. And it was because of Miss Pear. We had a young lead leader program for a long time. It was initiated by Miss Jean Pear. Most of the girls that she have coached they has exhibit this in their lifelong journey today. Some of them, you see them, they're a perfect lady and they have the qualities because she usually molded it into them and we try to carry on from there. Our main objective is to bring out the best in them. We try to dabble in their education, in their choices and um, some of their decision making. So when we have good players, we follow them. We follow them through school. Are they getting good grades? Are they making, doing their assignments? And in that aspect of it, we have molded a lot of wonderful young women in this society today. Traveling to international tournaments abroad became a key way to improve the quality of netball in the Cayman Islands and to instill pride in the national team players. It was in the 
early 70s that we took our, I think we took our under 12 to Jamaica and we would go to Jamaica. But it wasn't until 1977 that we went on our first international tournament, which was in the Bahamas. We got progressively better because we, once we started going international, we continued international right up to 2003. We've been to Australia, New Zealand, England, um, Jamaica, all the Caribbean countries. We won some and we lost some, um, but it was more, it wasn't so much about the winning, as it was for us it was about competing, being there, and every year we participated, we saw where our level improved and other countries commented on that. So we were not the top team, but we were not the bottom team either. And the fact that we were improving continuously, I think that was a great accomplishment for us. It's an experience bar none. When you leave your island and, and is out in the wild world representing your country, you really realize that you are expected to be true ambassadors. Anything that you say, any of your actions reflect on your country. Being a part of a national team, going to other places, particularly I can remember going to Australia. We were the unknown in Australia, coming from this tiny Caribbean island with the great Jean Pierre as our coach. So of course, they were expecting a lot from us and still didn't know what to expect. So that gave us an opportunity, not just to put Cayman on the, um, on the map, but also to showcase the sport in the Cayman Islands. After Jean Pierre died in 2002, Cayman's national team still traveled to international tournaments until 2003. But with no national coach and a loss of funding by the Cayman Islands government, netball fell on a decade of hard times. In 2012, the government funded the position of a netball technical director and national coach again, and Australian Gillian Lee was hired to try and bring the quality of Cayman netball back to what it once was. With, with this new technical director, I think we have to start almost all over again. We have to start developing the foundation again because that lapsed. Unfortunately, without having somebody in my position for the last 10 years, it, it had really deteriorated as far as the numbers playing, the education young girls were getting or young players were getting in schools. So they didn't actually know the game to say, yes, I want to play that game. That's my goal here, to increase the number of kids playing the game of netball and being, well, being taught the game of netball early on so that they can choose that as a sport. Not having a technical director for so long isn't the only challenge netball has faced. Getting the needed funding for its programs and tournament participation is always a struggle. It's fantastic that uh, my position is now funded by the government, uh, but I am the only person uh, funded in the netball programs. So uh, to be able to do everything is uh, is a little out of my realm, but uh, I'm certainly trying my best. Well, I think we should have more uh, international experience, not just like, I've been playing that ball for so long that my first experience was just in August of 2013. Like, a lot of the girls here play, but they don't get the experience, so they stop. So I think more international games will allow like the Netball Association to grow much more. It's hard working outside all the time, you know, with, with the heat, so, you know, it becomes that you can't use the middle of the day, um, you know, to get the kids out here. So, you know, to get an indoor facility would be so useful, so useful. We should be at a level where we are hosting events. And we can't host events because we don't have facilities. Um, I, was, I was hoping that we would have finished the John Gray gymnasiums because there are two of them and they would have been sufficient to have games. I was hoping that that would finish. So we could have at least hosted an under 16 or even an under 21. Um, it would be difficult to host the World Cup because you have to have an in, um, a great indoor facility. Uh, I don't think we, we, we would be able to do that. We want to bring international players here to host games, to expose our young people. And we were not able to do half of our plan. We sit and we have all these beautiful plans, but it's hindered by not sufficient funding. In terms of funding for sports, there has to be a, a key relationship between the 
private and public sector. Of course, the government can only do so much. I cannot overemphasize how important and how vital uh, sponsorship is to the life of an organization and its programs. One corporate friend of the Nepal Association has found is Dart Cayman Islands. Netball is one of the focus sports in the Cayman Islands as identified by the government, but I think it gets forgotten a lot of times. Um, they went for a long period of time before hiring a technical director. They have one now in Jillian uh, and she does a great job. Um, and no one was really talking about netball. Nobody really knows that they run uh, youth programs and you know, co-ed adult programs as well. So I think they get lost in the shuffle. Uh, the sponsorship dollar for sports in the Cayman Islands is spread thin as it is because there's so many different sports uh, and it's, it's easily overlooked. But it's an important sport, especially considering how many young women play the sport growing up. It was a pretty easy sponsorship for Dart to decide to sponsor the Netball League. It's a rare opportunity for them to come inside, you know, at Kamana Bay um, and all of Dart we're kind of supporting community activities uh, and we try to make a focus on keeping people active and healthy. For more than a generation, netball has been a vital sport for Cayman women, teaching them life skills as well as skills on the court. The women don't, didn't have many things to, for anybody to help them to be leaders. And netball was one of those things that helped the women to be leaders. Most of our netballers, um, once they came out of school, they did well in school they went to university or they're now in very big positions in the Cayman Islands. I see the worth it gives to people, to women in particular. And I think that, this is my personal feeling, that women need to be lifted by women. I think there's a huge socialization factor uh, with, with a lot of young ladies getting leadership and mentorship from many more women, right? Uh, that's very important. So of course, within the sport of netball, it goes way beyond just teaching the game itself, but of course, you're raising young females. In netball, we, we speak about developing the total person, not just the player in terms of the skills of the game, but in terms of your own personal characteristics, things like time management, discipline, teamwork, um, just really honing those skills that are very necessary in my life and in my career to, to date. Netball, when going to training, we had to be on time, so I get, um, netball actually taught me how to be more courtesy about going to being on time and all that, be more punctual, more respectful, to know how to motivate your peers and communicate well with your coaches and your players, so and netball has taught me like a lot of skills required to that, yeah. When we go out planning games and planning overseas trip, we always utilize our young people. And because of that, they learn a lot of skill. And so we put them in roles to develop as speakers, as umpires, as um, ambassadors, and things like that. And for the game itself, it's not a game you can just go on the court and say, I'm going to play. You have to put on your thinking cap you have to think fast. You have to learn to pass that ball and not to move, you know? And you have to be a team player, learn to work along with other people. And these are the skills they're going to take right out into society. Netball gives girls and women the chance to play a sport as part of a team, something that teaches many life lessons. Certainly a, a team sport it teaches you um, cooperation, it teaches you tolerance, it teaches you to look out for other persons. 
If you're a part of a team, you can't think, well, this is just about me and I'm only going to play for myself because you realize that your playing and the way you look after your teammates um, will enable you to win or lose a game. Playing on a team, the overall discipline, the team spirit and, you know, win or lose, you know, learning to comfort each other in losing and also celebrating in winning and also about giving constructive criticism and today when I look back that is part of who I am in the work environment. I strive to give constructive criticism to um, my staff and you know if they're down uplift them show them where they're going wrong and I think I learned from that. It's just really fun and it's a no contact game so that's what I like about it and it's something that we can all get together and play. Well netball is a game that really tickles the fancy of girls. It, it's, it's reality, it does. Girls love the sport and, and that's fantastic and, and I, th I think part of it is the team sport aspect that girls love playing with their mates and working with their mates. Only in that team sport environment do you really get that type of level of interaction where you have to work together with other people and you experience once again people from different cultures, different ethnicities, different backgrounds but you have to come together and you have to find a way to work together despite your differences for a common goal. It also enables you to make lifelong friends. Um, the friends that I've made by a netball has made good contacts in my career here. Also developed me as a, as a person and I think being a part of a team you learn now I'm a principal of a school I am a part of a team but I have learned skills that enabled me to um, relate to my team. Being in a team sport is life because life is about working with people. Although netball is seen as primarily a girls and women's sport, men can enjoy it as well in the Netball Association's co-ed league. I've been playing co-ed netball for about seven to eight years now. I uh, had some good friends actually give me a call when uh, the Netball Association was putting on a corporate netball league. And so they asked me, hey, you know, come and play. We know that you're busy and everything, but we need a, we need a goal shooter. So I had no objections to that. Uh, that's my favorite position. So I said, sure, I'm in. And uh, that's how it started. We're working on a mixed league with the adults competition, uh, but the gap's a bit wide at the moment. We've got the primary school boys, you know, enjoying the sport and the adults, but there's a big gap in the middle. So it's about bridging that gap. For netball to return to its glory days in Cayman, it is important to keep children and adults playing at all ages. I think it's always about uh, broadening the base in terms of partici uh, participation. So we want as many, as many children as possible to be exposed to the sport. Not only do we have the kids that are really important and the elite level, but you've got the people who just love playing the game and want to play just socially. And We've got that here as well in Cayman, which is great. Obviously, there's, there's not as many people um, playing, playing the game as what we'd love at that level as well. So that is just really fundamental.
after a 10-year absence from international play abroad, the Cayman national team traveled to Scotland in 2013. After a tough start in the tournament, the athletes showed the future is bright for Cayman Islands netball. They, they were committed, those young girls, for over a year. I thought that was admirable, to have young girls come three, four times a week for one year to be able to compete. There were challenges um, in the sense that they were beaten in the first round. But what was interesting is that when they had to go and play in the consolation, they won all their games. And I think that they, the, the, the first round taught them a lot. The education that the girls got as far as, you know, playing the Jamaica and, and the Scotland, uh, you know, it didn't matter how many times I told them how good the other teams were going to be, how big the other teams were going to be, it didn't matter. They have to experience it themselves. The game there is very different than the game we play here on island. It's much faster, they move very quickly, they get on side and we learn a lot. What I'm really liking is um, now that we're back, quite a number of the girls are coming out and coaching the primary school teams each week, coming out and umpiring, helping the under 16s. Um, so it's that flow on effect will be invaluable. They will be the new Netball Association. They will be the leaders of, of tomorrow. We've had instances where, remember going off, I think we were going to Australia at the time. No, that's a big deal. You're going from here to Miami, to Los Angeles, to Hawaii, and we were always mindful of, keep together as a group, keep together as a group, don't go off on your own. So we're waiting for a transfer to Los Angeles and one of our managers managed to get herself left behind. But we laugh about it because in the end she got to Australia before we did. At about age 16 or so, I was playing for the under 17 national basketball team. And one of, the, one of our practices was actually used for greater team building and for fundamentals. And for that practice session, we actually played netball style basketball, I would say. So in other words, uh, we weren't restricted to particular thirds like netball, but we were not allowed to dribble. So that means we had to rely on the fundamentals of, of course, passing, moving into the open space, catching the ball. You know, it, it, it actually, it's actually more difficult to do that when you're not dribbling. So we had a much greater appreciation for netball. We had this turtle called Suck It Up. Like everyone each day who did something bad, complained, nag, or said something stupid would get the turtle they had to carry it around all day. In, not in their bag, but all day, even to training, to games, to dinner, to everything. So that's like the funny thing that we had there. I met a lot of players through, um, through netball and who are still my friend. One of the things, I traveled to the Commonwealth game in Delhi and lo and behold, I was in the cafeteria and I heard my name being shouted. I looked around, it was one of the Trinidad netball players who played with me um, back in the days, who is now coaching the national team. So I was like, oh my gosh, all the way in Delhi to see each other after all these years. So it was just quite amazing. <laughs> 